All right, guys, so the thought came to my mind today is if I had to start fishing all over again, what kind of tackle would I buy and why? I mean, how would I go about buying the first reel and the first set of hooks all the way from not catching any fish to catching fish like this? That's how quick they can go out. Swallowing the hook. Woo. So in this video, we're gonna talk about if I had to start over, what would I have bought, why I've bought it. Roll intro. All right guys, so the first thing I would do is I would remember to keep it simple. All right, don't go buy a bunch of junk. Um, basically, it's gonna boil down to if you're on a budget and you wanna be well-rounded, I would get one 3000 series reel, 2500, 3000 series reel, smaller uh, like bass fishing type gear, 12 pound mono, or you, you could put something like 20 pound braid on there. Something that'll be well diverse, everything from catching fish in the ponds from brim to bass all the way to redfish on the flats all the way to bull reds on the bridge out of kayaks so that's really like what i would pick something like a pen fierce 3000 uh pen battle 3000 something in that class uh you know don't go super expensive believe me you don't need super expensive gear to begin with just something that'll hold up and maintain i've used the fierces and the battles they're great battles a little high end um, I, the fierce works great anything in that you know fifty dollar range is going to last a long time and it's going to it's going to make you happy you're not going to be cussing at it and it's not going to die all right guys so here's a good example this is my pen fierce right here this is my Pen Fierce 3000. I got this thing at Walmart like two years ago and I knocked down, drug it out, dropped it, submerged it, caught bull reds from 40 inches all the way down to brim and the ponds. It's a 3000 series reel. I think it's got 20 pound braid on it. It's on a GS2 ugly stick right here. Medium action. You can get this rod brand new for like 35 bucks. You can get this reel on sale probably at Christmas for like around the $40 mark. And I've caught everything with this. It stays in my truck. It goes with me everywhere I go because you never know when you just got to, you know, just fish. You know, Shimano's and Abu Garcia's that are in that spectrum, great. I don't, I don't suggest going out and buying a bait caster if you've never used one before because they can be kind of a, they can be a little hard to use at the beginning, but they're not hard to grasp the concept of. I don't really like them, um, but because I'm always fishing in the wind, I'd rather just go with a nice spinning reel. Sorry guys, I got to go mobile because the air conditioner came on. Small series rod and reel, 3000 something in the $50, $60 price range until you decide to go up. Don't get expensive with it because odds are you're going to lose it, break it, destroy it. I had cheap stuff growing up and they lasted a while if you, as long as you rinse them off. I'm, think, I'm talking mainly to the saltwater fishermen out here. Now, now hold on, let me show you uh, one of the examples I got off uh, eBay for 10 bucks. Those of you that's watch this channel a lot, you know this reel. This reel was $10 on eBay and I threw some, some braided fishing line on there and I've been using this thing forever. I got this rod right here on clearance from Gander Mountain for 40 bucks. So 40 bucks, 10 bucks, around 50 bucks, not, in, not counting the line, I was in the offshore kayak fishing business. So I just wanna say that you can get in the game cheap. Now, I mean, honestly, this Captain America pole right here does work, son. So this was nine bucks and I've caught a lot of junk on it and it fits in my truck. Don't hate on me, guys. I'm just saying you can do it for cheap. So don't think you gotta have a lot to catch fish. Just put some good line on there, rock and roll. So now that I'm at this, I'm just gonna show you what I keep my, uh, my lures and stuff in. This right here, guys, is what I keep my fishing tackle in. This pretty much fits in my kayak and in my crate. It can also go in my backpack. And really, if I got more than this, I really don't need it. 
and then here I'll have like you can see I got some some bigger weights I got some bigger hooks right here I just have a couple like I think these are four or six aught they might be six aught because I was tarpon fishing shark fishing um, I got a couple smaller ones for like you know if I want to switch gears catch them small no it's not a circle hook I just had a few of these I'm gonna use them until they're gone all the rest are circle hooks see I promise guys I got a circle hook okay so and then I got a selection of jig heads so it's a, it's a little it's a little unorganized I got some quarter ounce jig heads three eighth ounce jig heads and that's really about it all the way to 40 feet of water three eighths so usually do it I got a couple rattle traps I got one or two uh, top water baits some duster rigs and uh, these like these tsunami like uh, jigs right here these things kill the Spanish mackerel they're like 80 cents a piece trust me you don't have to have fancy stuff to catch fish if they're hungry they're gonna hit and I got a gotcha plug in here so there's a gotcha plug right there you see it so that this is really all that goes with me I have in another bag I'll have my leader material and my mail and wire that's it. This whole tackle box will probably cost you, I don't know, like 30 bucks with, the, I mean, if you're buying the Rattle Traps brand new, but I mean, you can usually get a compliment bomber Rattle Trap lookalike for a buck or two, and then, you know, you just get the colors you want. Change the hooks out, you're A-OK, -okay, rock steady. Because to tell you the truth, guys, my gear came from yard sales, eBay, Craigslist. And I promise you, you can get good stuff out there for a cheap price. So don't think you gotta have a huge budget. I'd just buy me two rods. I'd get me something 3,000, 2,500 series. I'd get me an ugly stick I'd throw on it. I'd go find me a Pin 750 with them old gold tops from a garage sale, which I bought one this weekend for 20 bucks. Throw some braid on it, and you're ready to go. And that's what I would stick with. And I would keep it totally simple. Also guys, don't overthink what you're trying to buy. I know I did that. I was basically paralysis by analysis. I would sit there and research every rod and reel on the on the net. Never make a decision. I knew everything about every reel. And then I realized, what am I doing all this for? It's just a reel. Most of them work. I'm just gonna throw some line on it and go fishing. You're gonna spend more time and money wasted researching than you're gonna be able to do fishing. Next thing guys, if I was y'all, I would just go ahead and invest in a kayak because it's gonna open up the waterways to you. You're gonna be able to go from fishing right there on the shore and having nowhere to fish to all of a sudden you're everywhere. And now, people say, oh, the kayaks are too expensive. No, they're not. You can get them on Craigslist and Facebook at the end of the season. Like right now, I see a bunch of them on Facebook Marketplace, like two and 300 bucks. I would take everything in my closet, dump it out, sell everything, go get me a kayak. It doesn't have to be a fancy one because as long as it gets on the gets you on the water That's the first th step and then you can decide what you want from there Like I said one big rod one little rod just go ahead and buy something that is you know that 3,000 series with an ugly stick and then that something that's in like the 6,000 series and above like I have an 850 it's a little big the 750s pretty good size for kayaks and for most things out of boats like, you're not getting spooled on a, a, a 750 with 30 pound braided line. Like, that's a lot of line. I'm just saying. So keep it simple. And if you're, tr if you're, if you're doing a lot of lure fishing, you might want to get two small reels, rod and reel combos, and uh, one big rod and reel combo because that we don't have to change bait so many, much. Because basically, what I do is that on my big reel, I'll have a circle hook uh, with a, a mono leader and maybe a little steel. Um, for trolling and then my little rod and reels would have either a jig and a midwater uh, bait or a topwater bait and a jig that way I can traverse water columns so really that's pretty much it big one and a little one keep it cheap keep it simple so guys don't be afraid to pick up on Craigslist marketplace Facebook eBay there's some great deals out there you can pick them up at yard sales all day long throw a little oil in them, a little grease, rock and roll. So the next thing guys, you really only need about five lures. Like you don't need all these lures. I would match the hatch. I'd have me a jig. I'd have me something around the middle water column, like a, 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 like a rattle trap and maybe a couple different sizes. Um, I would have me a sabiki rig because you gotta have bait. And then I'd probably have me a spoon and I'd have me an open spot for some extra lure, like a gotcha plug if you're in salt water um, or something that's shiny um, that's heavy and you can cast and durable 
Just keep the hook sharp on them and that's really all you need. Now, now you might be saying to me, hey, what about hooks? What about things like that, tackle? I would go and buy some swivels, of the same or maybe a little bit bigger uh, consistency weight uh, capacity as the line I'm using. So if my leaders are 60 pounds, I would go and buy like 60 to 80 pound swivels and that's what I'd go with. The small ones, so that way things don't see them, I'd put those in my pocket. I'd go and I'd get me some, some leader material. I'd go and get some 30 to 50, 60 pound mono uh, just from like from Walmart. You can get them in like 50 to 100 yard spools and then that'll last you forever. You can do everything from redfish to tarpon back and forth, black drum, you're good to go. That's what I would go with. I'd just give me a couple spools of it and it'll last me a long time. And then you're saying hooks. I would just get some hooks, everything from maybe a packet of like, you know, brim hooks, because if you want to go brim fishing or catch bait, I would go and buy me some like four aught and six aught and maybe a couple of seven aughts. And if you want to go tarpon, seven aught. If you want to go bull reds, four to six aught. And then uh, some smaller spec, uh, some smaller hooks for like speckled trout. I mean, just kind of like guesstimate it. If it looks too big to go in their mouth, it's probably too big. And I wanted to add, I was talking about hook size. Number four treble hooks is another thing I keep in my kit bag at all time. Number four treble hooks work for your duster rigs and just about everything else. King mackerel, you know, just going to be in the ball game with number four treble hooks. So four, six, seven aught, maybe something a little smaller, maybe like a two aught some brim hooks, number four treble hooks, all you need. And if you're wondering if you're wondering my theory about fluorocarbon, I'm gonna catch flack for this, but I'm gonna say it. It's not worth the money. I just use mono. Fluorocarbon's probably awesome. It's probably the coolest stuff in town. It's probably the bee's knees, but for the amount of money they want for it, I'm going with mono and I just won't catch that fish that day. So for probably 10 bucks there, you're rocking and rolling and you're ready to go. Then you might need to pick up some, some, some lead weights and that's, that's pretty simple. Just, you know, um, I don't use a lot of weights. I just pick up some uh, that, that makes sense. If you're fishing the jetties and you're gonna have to pick up a lot of weights, you know, like pyramid sinkers and, and you know, stuff for your knocker rigs. I don't use a lot of that stuff. Pretty much if it doesn't fit in a little bitty box, I'm not taking it. If it doesn't fit in my little backpack or in a little crevice on my, on my kayak, it's not going. So I keep it, I keep it very simple. I keep it very easy to maneuver, easy to pack. And that way I can transition from my backpack to the kayak, to the beach, all the way around. If I gotta hop on a boat, I got a little bit with me. And then some leader wire. Like I usually use number 42 pound wire. Works for just about everything. You can even catch tarpon with it. Um, and then I might carry uh, some number six or something all the way up to 100 in case I wanna jump on a big shark. But that stuff's really cheap. Malin wire is like $2 for like a big spool, two or three bucks. So you can just chunk it at the end of the year because odds are you're gonna lose it anyways. Um, some guys use a seven strand, but that's too rich for my blood. It's too expensive. I'm trying to, my point of this video is I wanna keep it nice and cheap because I want everybody to be able to get into the sport of fishing and not be like, oh man, I can't afford all this tackle. I don't wanna go spend $200 in tackle. What I'm talking about, dude, what I'm talking about doing is like, mate, you can be ready to go tackle and all for like 30 bucks. And then you can put it in whatever kind of tackle box you want. I usually keep it in a little Tupperware container. And then for the rod and reels, you can be with a big one and a little one for probably a hundred bucks. Probably less than that. I'm willing to bet you can do it both for 50. You can go to a pawn shop and pick up some. And if you're wondering guys, this is how I store my gear. Basically I got my surfboard up here because it used to be over here because and Samantha kept yelling at me. It actually fell off the top and hit her on the head. So she made me move it over here. Next up, I got my kayaks right here. I've got this one that I got off Craigslist for like 200 and something bucks. Came with wheels and a paddle for 200 and something bucks. It's a thousand dollar kayak. I got it for 200 and something bucks. It can be done. That's my Hobie Outback, which you've seen in all my videos right there. It was about 1800 bucks, but it was worth every dime. And then I keep my, I got my, my life vest right there. I've got my cooler bag right there for keeping the big offshore fish and Spanish mackerel and stuff. Keep my paddles right here. And then a uh, net, um, mailing wire that's all in a junky mess right there. They're like one of those, uh, remember those little slinkies back in the day? Well, mailing wire is the same way. Once you unspool it, once you unravel it, it goes everywhere and you want to have them throw it away. 
but it's only like two bucks for a spool, so it's cheap. Um, and then I got my dry bag right here, which those are awesome. I just stuff it in the bow of this kayak and I put everything in there, even this camera. So I wanted to show you that guys. I want to show you how I store my stuff and that in just a little space in your garage, you can have two awesome ocean bearing kayaks. You can go in the Gulf, you can go out three, four miles offshore and catch snapper with this, catch tuna, catch king mackerel, you can catch tarpon, and it fits in the corner of your, of your house. And then I even got my, my surfboard ready in case I got to go there too, you know. And then I got my tackle. I really don't have a lot of tackle because I lose it all. Or I just hang it like this. I just hang them up right here. And then when I need them, I grab them, I go. Same way with here. And then, oh, these are a must. You got to have these. These are just uh, fish grips. I would definitely invest in a pair of these. Oh, and a kayak crate. If you're big into kayaks, like I'd get a milk crate because they're awesome and you can get them for free and you outfit it with PVC pipe and you can troll and put your rods and everything. But all right, guys, that's really my thoughts on this fishing stuff, man. I, 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 wanna, I want everybody to not get discouraged about fishing. I want you all to think that you can get in to the sport of fishing easily and not have to spend a ton of money. Um, you know, yeah, I've got one fancy kayak, but my other kayaks was like, I think my yellow one was like two or 300 bucks with everything in it. It's a nice kayak. It's a Quest, they're expensive. I got it for cheap. So yeah, I'm holding this camera up right now and it's killing my arm. <laughs> but I wanted to get this message out there. The dogs wouldn't be quiet inside and the air conditioning unit over here was killing me. So, you know, I had to just go ahead and voice my opinion. I hope you guys enjoy this. Comment down below for how much it took you to get into the sport of fishing. And you'll, I'm sure there'll be a big diverse conversation between cheap to $100,000 bass boat or offshore boat so i just i just think it's you know cool and i hope we can all have a good conversation so don't forget to like and subscribe guys and i'll see you guys later